Right, today we're going to be talking about external authentication of DNAC. Uh, in particular, we're going to go and authenticate to ICE. I uh, aim to do it in nine minutes, but there's a lot of content here, so it might take a little bit longer. So what are we looking at? Today we've got DNAC 1334 as the current version, and uh, we've got a one virtualized deployment and your host, Sirius Sam. So we're going to jump straight on and get cracking with this one. Okay, here we are. Hello, DNAC. Um, so first of all, let's have a look at what we need to do. So if we want to log into DNAC, if we go over to the system settings, we can have a look at our users. So on the user page, we see we have this role based access control tab. So here are the various different roles that we can use within DNAC um, that have different functions and allow them to do different things. Um, Currently, there is just the local users. I've got the admin user and a guest user configured, so there's no authentication happening externally. Um, if we click over on the external authentication tab, we can see here um, some information that gives us some guidance. For example, we can see the Cisco AV pair is the AAA attribute we are expecting to receive back from uh, ICE. Um, and then the role will be based on whatever these different roles here. What I've done ahead of time for this, I've actually just put this into a notepad document just so we can copy and paste that as required. Um, why is why is this good to have different logins? Um, yeah, short for restriction of, of access, who can do what, who can see what, of course, is good. Uh, and we can also see who's logged on. You know, if you're logging on with your your own um, Active Directory credentials, we can, we can have a log. Um, of who's done what and when, um, but but equally in insurance as well. You know, if you've got a lot of people um, managing the health of the network, you can have different assurance dashboards and you can customize the layout of DNAC. Anyway, let's hop over then to ICE and see what we need to do. So a few things for ICE um, as a whole, just to have it up and running. Um, we need to ensure that under the deployment, we have the um, device admin service enabled, so we can tick that there. But bear in mind that does require a license. Uh, and the license you ask, it's the device admin license, and that's aptly named. So that's um, just some housekeeping for ICE. Um, so what we're going to need to do when uh, DNAC sends, so we're talking about TACAX authentication here, so DNAC is going to have to be a, um, a device within ICE itself, so first of all we need to add that in as, as a network device, so we can go into the administration network resources network devices and we'll add in DNAC over here. Um, the IP address, I'm just going to copy that over because I cannot remember, is here. So Bear in mind, if you've got, this is for myself, I have a single box deployed, so it's a single, with a single IP on it, so it's only going to be coming in on this one IP. Um, if you have um, a cluster deployed, you can add uh, multiple IP addresses in, you can add multiple network devices, um, or if the cluster is within a subnet, you can just add the subnet in there. Uh, so I've got a slash 24, which would cover anything with that subnet. Equally, you can um, add in multiple different IP addresses uh, if you've got different interfaces that, that DNAC may potentially use to reach out to twice. Okay, and then we need to enable the TACX service and then we put in the shared secret. And this is the um, this is the key that's used to encrypt and decrypt the TACX packets uh, in, in the communication flow between uh, DNAC and ICE. So I'm going to save that. And then he's gone in as a device. Excellent. So now we're going to need some form of um, users and groups. Um, you can, of course, if you've got Active Directory, you can use the groups and users you already have defined there. Um, I haven't integrated my AD, so what I've done is I've created a couple of groups. I've created a super admin group um, and then an observer group. Uh, we could create another group here. Let's create one that's affiliated with DNAC. So let's just say... Um, telemetry client role, so TC, let's just call it TC, and that creates the groups. Uh, and then we have our users, so our, our locally local users, I've got a, a DNAC admin who's already been created, if I just show you what the context of this looks like, I've got his username, his password, and then he's associated to a particular group. And why we do this is that then we um, pass back the authentication uh, except and the Cisco AV pairs, then we're going to uh, we're going to tie that to these particular groups we have defined. So I could create a new user. Let's just call him um, I 
YouTube because uh, that's where we are. Okay, and then we'll add him to the group, which was the group we just created, which I've already forgotten the name. It was TC, that's right. Uh, where's she gone? So, you just type in TC. There we are. And hit submit. So that YouTube user is now assigned to that group. Excellent. So, next we're going to go and have to set up the policy element. So, this is under our work centers and then our policy elements under device admin. You see there, policy elements. Uh, and under our results and our tankx command set. So, basically, what we're looking at doing here is, is saying what commands um, users can and cannot run when they log in. I already have a permit all, um, but I'm just going to show you what creation of that looks like. So, I can go all commands. Uh, and then all we have to do here is say any commands that's not in this list below. So if there's none in the list, then we're going to permit all by default. Um, here, if you wanted to do to restrict down to certain command sets, typically for device admin, then you can you can do so here. And I'll just save that. So that's our all commands. Excellent. So now we have to go and set up our profiles. And these are our profiles that are going to be tied to our authentication rules. Okay. So let's give it a name. We'll just call it um, DNAC. So what are our different roles we had? We got super admin. Super admin. Default privilege level is going to be 15. And then this is important, the custom attributes. So we need to add one in. And these are mandatory attributes. Uh, and this is going to be, as we talked about back on DNAC, on external authentication, this AV pair and the results. So I have that notepad doc already to copy and paste for us. So if we take the AV pair, paste them in there, and then the results for the super admin the role returned will be, here's the value, tick, hit the tick box, otherwise it won't save that, and submit. Brilliant. And that is the TechX profile complete. So now we need to do our policy sets. Okay, and that is just here on the next tab along. So works in this device admin and then device admin policy sets. So we can use the default rule. So this everything lands in a default rule by default, by definition of the word default. Um, you could create a new a new policy set for but for sake of simplicity, we're going to use this default one. Let's have a look at the authentication policy here. So the, the first thing we're going to check is is the user you know present in these ID stores? Where, where are we looking and, and what we're going to do if um, if it fails, if it's not found, or um, any other rules? We can limit this down. You know, if we had just a, an active directory user store, we could just look there and, and not actually our internal user store. So once that uh, check gets passed, we'll then go down and we'll go through the authorization rules. Um, so we need to create one for the, the DNAC role itself. So we can put that in here and we'll call that DNAC super. It's our super admin role. And then what are the conditions for this? So what we're looking for here is we're looking for the group. It's the group that the DNAC user is associated to. So remember before we created um, the, the DNAC, it was DNAC admin username. And then that DNAC admin is mapped to the group of super users. So we click the group name and then we can look for super and there's the super admin group. So anyone who's now affiliated with that group will match this rule. And what do we do? What do we do when we match that rule? So that's our all commands command set we created earlier. And then what's the shell profile? And here is the DNAC super admin one. So that's going to return those AV pairs that we specified. And then we can save that rule. Okay, now back over to DNAC. So we've done everything we need to do on ICE. Let's go and have a look on DNAC. So we'll go back to our external authentication. So there's some things we need to do here. So if we go back to the settings, you need to have authentication and policy server defined. Now we can integrate with them. We can look at my previous video I did um, yesterday, I believe, and you can have a look at the, the integration of ICE and DNAC. Um, but, but the trick is here, we need to have a um, authentication server defined for TACX. Now, I can see that this one here, this is actually my uh, fully integrated ICE server. I can see it's my ICE server and it's doing both RADIUS and TACX. But I do have a non-ICE server here for TACX. That's actually a fictitious IP address. 
that my point really here is that if you've got a two node uh, or two cluster deployment, you've got one for radius and one for tachex, and your uh, DNAC is integrated with the radius cluster for SDA, you can still this 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 still works with a non-integrated um, TACX server. So so don't be fooled and thinking you need full integration. You just need it defined in here, the IP address and the server. Um, and so so it could be non-ice, for example, and you could have server 1.2.3.4 um, with a shared secret of you know potato, uh, and it's a non-ice server, and that's now in. Good. So back to the users then. So if we go to the external authentication, we, all we need to do here is tick enable that external user authentication. Tick. Now, this is the default AV pair value that's pushed down, the AA attribute, sorry. If you type in a different name here, Sam, for example, then that changes what the expected attribute is back. So don't do that unless you, unless you want to. It's perfectly acceptable if you want to. Uh, and then we choose what's the AAA server we're going to use. So we want to choose our ICE server here. Um, and then the shared secret. So this is the shared secret we created before when we added the device in. So if I go back to the work centers and to the network resources, this was the, the DNAC device we added in. And this is the shared secret we have here. Okay. Um, so we put that in here, and then under the advanced settings, yes, we're going to be using TACX, so click update there, fantastic, and then if there's a secondary one, we can add that in, Look, there's our 1.2.3.4, so that could be to some Linux-based uh, TACX server. Okay, that is all we need to do for external authentication, a lot of work on ICE, not so much work on um, DNA center there. So let, let's validate this. So let's go in and log in. So if we go, first of all, let's pop up the uh, the, the live logs. So if we go TACX and have a look at the live logs, we should see our authentication coming in. Um, so the it was DNAC admin. Oh, I think it was DNA admin actually. Success. And we can see on here, we are DNA admin. If we hit refresh over here, we should see DNA admin authorized. And he's got the super admin. So we can check that. If we check on the the report, if we scroll down to the attributes, and this is what's passed, AV pair equals role equals super admin. And that is wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it works, right? That's what we expected. Expected results are, uh, are good. Um, we do have other users in here. So we created this, the, the Bibby, which is me. Um, we, can, we can test that as well. So let's log out of here and let's try testing another user. Bear in mind, this user we created, but we haven't given it any... Oh, it's failed. We haven't given it the... Uh, AAA attributes to return. So if we hit refresh, we should see that actually, yes, this is a valid user. It's, it's We've matched it, it's, it's been permitted, but um, the authorization policy there is not the same as we saw with, see it's missing, as we saw with um, the DNA admin. So see the DNA admin, it's got the authorization attributes, and we don't have those. We just got privilege level 15 so we can we can we can fix this um, so if we go back into our work centers and then under our policy elements and our results there's lots of clicking in this in our command sets note in our profile so we had this DNAC super admin role we'll create a new one now and we'll call that DNAC um, and I can't remember I think it was observer Let's go obs, 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 uh, you know, as you like. And then we'll create this custom attribute, which is mandatory. And there they are, uh, observer role. Let's take this AV pair first. And then the observer role. And there she goes. Tick, remember to tick it. And submit. Excellent. And that is not complete. So 
we need to do the policy set as well. So then we'll go back into our policy and our authorization policy, and then we'll call, create a new one. We call him DNAC OBS. And then what we're looking for here is we're saying, does the group, so the user is created, the user's assigned to a group, and the group is what is validated. So in here, we're looking for observer. And then we're going to use that guy. Um, and then we're going to go, yep, permit all commands, and then we're going to return back that obs shell profile. I'll hit save. Um, and just to close the loop, so we're all happy with that, if we go back to the identities, we can see that this is the Bibi user, which we're talking about. And we can see he's part of the observer group, and if we go on to the groups, we can see that we have the group uh, here. So anything within this group is what's now being matched by that rule set we've just created. So back to our live logs and let's try and log in again with that user that previously failed. Success! And he is in, and he is in, and he is happy. There you are, logged in. Fantastic. So that concludes really. We can do one last check if you like, which is just to show that the Bibi user is now coming through this authorization policy. And we can see down here we are now passing the right attributes back as expected. So, pretty straightforward. So, in summary, what we need to do uh, make sure ISIS got the network device admin enabled, make sure the DNAC is added as a network device, uh, make sure we create all our users and groups or map it to some external authentication. Uh, such as Active Directory, uh, and then create our policy elements uh, and then our profiles and, and then map those profiles into the author authentication policy, uh, ensuring that we use the right AAA attributes as defined in the external authentication page on DNAC. Um, and then on DNAC itself, it's just a case of enabling the external user and then choosing the AAA server, making sure that the AAA server is already part of a DNAC and it's configured as an authentication and a policy server. Brilliant. I uh, hope this is of use to you guys, and I'll see you next time.